Shigga da bang, shibba da boosh. Hey everybody, what's the crack? You are listening to Unforeseen. I'm your host, Ross Brown, and over there is my co-host and producer, Lorraine Murphy. See who I've called your co-host there now. Um, I've, you're just fully in now. Okay. Fully in. Okay. I've given you the accolade of being the co-host of what I what I would self con- self christen as one of the best podcasts in the podcast ether. Okay. Well, I feel then you should have given me some kind of a fanfare or something. Some sort of a fanfare. <laughs> what can you do from the um, list of audio pieces in front of you? Some sort of fanfare. What is the most celebra- celebratory Ooh, piece of word. audio you can find? Fucking, there was so many fucking... <laughs> Hang on. Don't okay. you tell you, you 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 me. Here's your fucking fanfare. Yes. Here's your fucking fanfare. <laughs> she gets an ovation, but the ovation isn't Renault. It's not Renault, but this girl's hair has got some stenos. The stenos are extensions. They're sticking it's out real. of her head. She's going to keep on producing until this podcast dead. She's just the girl who was a p- producer of first, and now she's the girl who's got lots of thirst for co-presenting and sitting across the counter from me. And don't you know that this girl's counting all of your G's, all of your brands, all of your money, all of your euros, all of your dollars. And this girl's so cool, she pops her fucking collar. That's right, Lane Murphy, Lorraine to the M-O, L-O, M-O, hello, Moto. Yeah, Rolo, Loro, that's her co-name, that's her co-host name, you know, Iolo. You only live once, you fucking dunce. And don't you know that I just dance but with this bunce? I didn't put that on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all right? Is that no fun <laughs> I mean, I asked for celebratory. It's better than trumpets. That is Isn't that? fantastic. You taught me Did that you phrase, actually... stenos. Stenos, my yeah. extensions. Don't tell anyone. They're like, they're meant to look really... Stenos, st- stenos sounds like a town in Game of Thrones. It's a very Dublin term for extensions. Me fucking stenos. Me stenos are falling Jesus. out of me head. But doesn't it sound like the king of, the king of stenos has to go down then to Wester- Westeros yeah. and be like, yeah. Stello stands with the <laughs> with the what are they? What are they called? The, fam- the big family, the Kardashians, the fucking the Jenners, fucking Targaryen, fucking. Oh, I Jenner. didn't watch it. You didn't watch no, Game I didn't of Thrones. Watch it. Are you off your fucking Stenos? Come here. We have talked about this before. If there's something that I should have watched, I probably haven't. The Americans. Nah. Ozark. Nah. Breaking Bad. Ozark is too blue looking for me. Breaking Bad. What do you mean? The porn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that weird blue filter on it. Okay. What's the crack with that? I think it's that? to make it look stark and sickly. Um, That's probably why I don't want to watch it then. Breaking Bad? Yes. All red and orange. But you like your red and orange Breaking shows. Bad took me, I'd say, about 10 years to watch it. Oh, I was I was pretty late to the game as well. Hmm. Like five years, but I caught up then for the last two years. I often wonder how Jesse is now. Did you watch El Camino? Nope. The follow-up thing about Jesse? No. Nope. No, neither did I. No, once, once Walt died. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, listen, if you don't I know what happened like, to Breaking yeah. Bad by now, you can fuck right off, right? <laughs> Fucking hell, the wire, they all got caught. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, what's cracking? What's the story? What have you got for me? What's the story is this is the bite-size edition of Unforeseen. That's what and, I do now uh, when you do bite-size now. Uh, let's do that it's again. It's the new little thing that we do. Bite-size. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, we have got a video for you from 1982. One of my favourite years Strange for name. videos on this <laughs> podcast. Um, I want you to have a look at it first and okay. just see if you can guess what's going on here. Okay. Okay. Let me have a look. How sweet is to roam by the sunny shore stream and hear the birds go. Co- this is uh, X Factor uh, from 1982. Uh, what's going on here? Um, I mean, I'm assuming there wasn't a local hairdresser in the town <laughs> to start. I mean, Jesus uh, Christ. I mean, I often was, wonder how they got their hair was like that. that. A, what was the crack? Was that a style? It must have been. It's like, do you know what it's like? It's like the, it's like the recessed version of the bowl cut. Do you know the way mm. sometimes they used to put the bowl over the head and they used to cut around? Yeah. Like, like, like Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. This one looks like they put a ball over the person's face <laughs> and then just cut around the edge here so that they had this this kind of it's a it's it's is it a perm? No, I don't think it's a perm. It's not a perm. That looks like she's got some natural wave and body to her own hair. And she's got I'll tell you what, no, she's got some good she's got some good volume to it. And like yeah, she's definitely styled it because that you can't get your fringe to do that naturally. No, that's like that's all the cow's licks. So I think she had rollers in her hair. There's a guy playing piano and yeah. she's singing and I don't know why 
this was organised. Look closely at the man that's playing piano. You might recognise him. Be the morning sun She knows, by the way, that she's... Uh... Oh, a new man. And who's behind? I'm tired of crying. <laughs> <laughs> She's uh, look the oh, okay, whoever's is that John Lennon? John Lennon is that fucking John Lennon? <laughs> <laughs> That's not John Lennon, is it? It's not John Absolutely Lennon. Absolutely not. He, well, whoever it is, is, he's starting to break his bollocks behind him. <laughs> so even he's aware that this is some sort of audition thing. And of your lion. It was in the good year seventy four, nineteen men escaped from Portridge prison that blew a little. <laughs> What's with the <laughs> It's very whistly isn't it <laughs> What do you think is going on here I don't, I don't know <laughs> Like I don't know So you don't recognise the piano player uh, No Because Is it Jerry Ryan Yeah well, you're getting closer I'm getting closer Yeah It's Frank McNamara Who the fuck is Frank McNamara Really Really oh, Wait no he was... Eurovision no, okay, maybe not. Mm, he could have been Frank for all Mac- I know. Was he on the lyrics board? He probably was at some point. Do you know any information about Frank McNamara? I know <laughs> he was the resident pianist for The Late Late Show. Oh, okay. Remember Frank McNamara? No. No? Okay. <laughs> was this Gay Burns' Late Late Show? Yes. I would have been too young for the... Yes, I would have been like 12 when that ended. Well, you're older than me and I remember it. Uh, I'm not fucking Methuselah. I know, but like you're still a few years older than me. Frank McNamara, okay, I, I still don't know what's going on. Are these people auditioning for the toy show? <laughs> Are these really yeah, old children? They're, they're all actually <laughs> eight <laughs> and nine years old. We often mention how old people looked yeah, back everyone, in the day. All, when all eight-year-olds had a tash. <laughs> <laughs> no stars to guide me. Jesus Christ almighty. Like, he sounds like a hot air balloon that's been shot down. <laughs> Loud of light. Oh, that's a good note. Mob. I mean, put on a pair of fucking even socks, <laughs> at least. Even socks? There's a green one and an orange one. Well, what's the opposite of odd? Oh, a pair. <laughs> matching. <laughs> matching, <laughs> matching. I always call them even. Uh, stripy and orange and green. Oh, it's the tricolour. Did you even oh, notice that now? I didn't notice Did you, that. He's wearing the tricolour. Fair play to him. And there's also something tucked into the bottom of his jeans. He's so got like... his pants rolled up, but he's also got like a box of fags or like some sort of like... It looks like he's got a tub of Vaseline. Yeah, a, t- <laughs> a, yeah, a tin of fucking hair wax or something tucked in. Ah, you never know now when you need the old hair wax, hey? I found... Oh my God! What a calf muscle! <laughs> Jesus Christ! He Was that an Elvis move? Wow. Wow, that was... Is he singing Elvis? Mm-hmm. I knew I he, so, yeah, I yeah. didn't even hear what he... I heard the ding-ding, but <laughs> straight away I was like, that's fucking Elvis right there. I'm shaking the camera, I'm so excited about this guy. This guy's a fucking horny devil. Um, <laughs> a new place to dwell we down at the end of Lonely Street and I'm a good He's got the collar up and everything. And yeah, he's not even... Okay, the cameraman is doing him a massive injustice <laughs> because he's gyrating his hips... And also crotch. But the cameraman has went, this is way too much. We're going to have to just focus on only the gut. <laughs> I got a second. Like, all you're just seeing is just belly up, belly down, belly up, belly down. <laughs> and he's giving a fucking, he's, he's impregnating the fucking viewers. And this guy's just going, we're just going to watch his lunch go up and down. <laughs> That's lousy now. Well, we be so long. <laughs> okay, right. So you've seen quite a few singers. Yeah. What do you think is going on? I think it's auditions. Okay, I think it's okay. I think it's one of a few things. I think it's either auditions for Eurovision. Okay. I think it's. Oh, there can't be that many things. It can be. It's either auditions for Eurovision. It's either what could it be? What could it be? What could it be? Nineteen eighty-two. Nineteen eighty-two. You've got the penis. Penis. <laughs> From the late late show. They're looking for. A, they're auditioning singers for the Lele Show. They're fucking. Uh, Gay Burn is having his 21st and he's looking <laughs> for a band. I don't know. The Late Late Show back in 1982 held a competition to find the worst singer in Ireland. <laughs> 
So these were... Are you saying the Late Late Show was doing the X Factor auditions before X Factor was doing the X Factor auditions? Yeah, but they were looking for terrible talent. I think that's what X Factor are also looking for. <laughs> and then just go and put in one Leona Lewis amongst uh, just a cavalcade of head cases. Um, so people audition for this knowing that they're horrific. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the very essence of being Irish, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like living in a real life episode of Father Ted. Yeah, we're shit. We know we are, <laughs> but could I possibly be the best <laughs> shit person at something? I mean, that in itself, like, encapsulates all of Ireland. Yeah. We're shit. We know it. We like it. <laughs> and we're going to keep doing it regardless. Like, that's... And let's all vote on who we think is the shittest. Who's the shittest? <laughs> Who's the shit? I hope there's a plaque <laughs> with shit in behind the glass. To stink out the whole house forever so we can all remember how shit I was. <laughs> like, think about this. Like, even our, even our sports teams. Like, we go to different countries. Our fans of sports teams go over there to support a team that we know are going to go home early. <laughs> People remortgage their houses so that they can go over knowing we're going to lose. But go, let's have the crack while they lose and let's change people's tyres and let's sing people out of Ann Summers and, like, just be ambassadors of failure. <laughs> yeah. But I kind of like this idea. I mean, what other competitions could you make? Like, f- what could we find the worst at? Ireland's worst fucker. <laughs> fucker? Yeah. Like the verb, like, Ireland's worst fucker. <laughs> this fella going, listen, <laughs> fucking two weeks ago, I was going at it, ha- fucking hammer and tongs, eight minutes. She was like, that's the scorting board. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland's worst break dancer. Oh, 100%. <laughs> oh, yes. They're at every wedding. It's that uncle that fucking... That would be like, hey, listen, we used to have lino back in the day. It was much easier. It's like, yeah, you also didn't have that much fucking gravity pulling you to the ground. Uh, yeah, Ireland's worst break dancer. Uh, Ireland's worst writer. As in handwriting no, or actual no, no, writer? No, actual writer. writer because okay. there's nothing better when someone thinks they're writing something clever or, mellif- like, you know, um, uh, mellifluous and... And fancy and deep and profound, deep and profound. When you fuck that up mm. and you don't get that, you mm. look like an absolute fucking twonk. Because there's no self, there's no self awareness. Yeah. When someone thinks something is a ma- an amazing piece of work, like that's one of my biggest fears is that I think something's good, and then I'm kind of go, no, it's not, because I just immediately just go, no, it's not, because I'm afraid to go. I think that's really good because I go, no, I'm one of them. Uh, I'm one of them. That's because you're Irish. Because I'm you, Irish. Yeah. Yeah. You won't believe in yourself. Yeah. Imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what happens? Do you know what has to happen for an Irish person to be deemed as successful or valuable in Ireland, what? especially in the entertainment industry? You have to be. You have to get something in England or America first, and then Ireland will go. Hang on, hey, he was here only a couple of years. You, you like him? <laughs> Can we have him back? Like that. <laughs> that's it. Or you need to be claimed by the UK, and then we're up in arms. Up in arms. Going, no, I'm sorry. Up in arms. But you notice that nobody cares when Jed were to call British. We're like, call him British. <laughs> call him Turkish. We don't care. Just fucking somebody claim the fuckers, would you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you Jedward for one county back. <laughs> This guy's good. This uh, this guy actually has a tone about him. Yeah, you see, I he, think he's, he just goes too high. Mm, he's actually a much better singer than what he's letting on. He's he's faking it a bit. Do you think so? Yeah. I, no, I think he's ambitious. I think he's actually ambitious, and I think I think uh, I think there's something to be learned from a fella like him. Okay. I think I think if he stayed in his box, yeah, if mm. he sang the songs that suit him, people would go, "Jesus, Jerry's a handy old singer," but Jerry is far beyond the songs that people tell him he should sing. Jerry doesn't want to sing Johnny Cash and Elvis. Johnny wants to sing Gloria Gaynor. And fucking why not? More fucking power to him. And yes, it means that he runs the risk of butchering the song. (laughs) But if Jerry feels Gloria Gaynor in his heart, then Jerry should do Gloria Gaynor. Go on, Jerry boy. Go on. Uh, I've been told before that I can't sing. but I'm. I don't believe that. I've heard you sing. But do you know why? Because I've got, I've, I've got diva in me. Yeah, you do. I have, you do. I have the essence of a diva inside me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to sing uh, you, uh, Never Enough from The Greatest Showman. Oh, what a song. Yeah. Um, I want to sing uh, Jennifer Hudson. 
Jennifer Hudson is, is like, she's there. She's in my soul. Like, she's right there in my heart. I like, when I see Jennifer Hudson sing, I'm like, that's me. Yeah. But like, I could probably, should we, should we do karaoke? <laughs> yeah, and I'll prove to you that I can sing a Johnny Cash you or Elvis song. You want to do it now? Fucking right now. Okay. I'll do Johnny Cash or, or Elvis. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then, and, I, and, I, and, and I'll get closer to what I should be singing with Johnny Cash or Elvis. Yeah. And But then, then I'm going to open up and I'm going to do something that makes me feel like I actually feel like a bit of an artist. Right? Okay. I'm going to line up, I'm going to, I'm going to pause this, actually I'm going to play, I'm going to leave a play through. I'm going to queue up a, a Johnny Cash karaoke song here. Right? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no, because I actually identify with this guy. I completely identify with him because he's being fucking brave, and we need to. No, I'm not claiming I'm a great singer by any stretch of the imagination. I think I'm shit, but I do know that I can stay closer to what I meant to do. Yeah, you're. You, what the problem is? You're singing the wrong songs. You have a lower register, and you want to sing like Celine Dion. You fucking got I it. I knew it. One. I knew it. You got it in one. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. I love how cheesy the fucking karaoke music is. All right. Are you ready? Loving it. <laughs> I thought there was eight bars of an intro. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, Johnny, it's okay. Right, we'll come on now. Going. All right. Here we go. Love is a burning thing. All right, all right. And it makes a fiery ring. Bound by wild desire. It's all right, isn't it? I'm liking this. I fell into a ring of fire. How low can he go? I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher. Is he gonna hit the and house? It burns, burns, burns. The ring of fire. The ring of fire. Yeah. All right. So that's right. Yes, man. Bit I told Cash, you you could right? sing. Not great. Uh, that, I, that, that was pretty good. Not great. That was pretty good. Right, but that, you know, you, you know. You know, I can do a bit, you know, I can do a bit of that. I can do a bit of Elvis. Yeah. I can do a bit of you know uh, that's Christy where, Moore. That's I can do where your talent lies. You know what I mean? I can do yeah. the, you know, right? Now, this is this is who I feel like then, right? Now I, this will come with a bit of a warning. I'm gonna pull down my microphone because I do get loud when You're I put clip. Jennifer Hudson because yeah, because you know what? You can't contain an energy and a power like Jennifer Hudson, right? I am excited for this. I am telling you. Gone already, see? I'm not going. You're the best thing I've ever known. That's the way I would ever go. No, 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 no way. No, 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 no way. I'm living without you. I'm not living without you. I don't want to be I'm staying and you and you and you you're gonna love me When did your podcast come to an end, Lorraine? <laughs> it's when Ross sang along with Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> but you know <laughs> <laughs> but it had such a potential. No, what I'm saying is, I'm happier when I'm Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Although there were tones of the Bee Gees in your voice there, now. Mm-hmm. But, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to try and Not turn this into... Could, could you hear the emotion? At least, because that's... What, what, when I'm singing Jennifer Hudson or Celine Dion or Whitney Houston or even Michael Bublé, Cry Me a River. Mm. Fucking the closest to a Bond song that ever wasn't a Bond song. Yeah, true. When I sing those songs, I, I don't even know the words. I just capture the... I feel the emotion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
But when I sing other songs, it's, you know, it's all right, whatever. But it's the ones that really fucking go for it, you know? Yeah, yeah. The moments of passion, the occasion of life. The things we never do again, but then they go. It's gone, you see, but the emotion takes over. Yeah. Deep down inside me, there's a little Whitney. Yeah. There's a little Sleon. 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 Come in for your tea, will it? So this guy. Yeah. There's a long way to go around the houses to get to this. <laughs> oh, we're going back to this video. Okay. Right. I think, I think this guy is, uh, is brave. Uh, My China doll. Yeah, she's got no confidence. And here's the thing, she was she, disappointed with her performance on the day. She was disappointed with her performance on yeah, the day. She had, she, fucking, she had the lyrics on a slip of paper in her hand. <laughs> we saw her cogging. She but was I mean, cheating. they wanted the worst singers. My so like, time. surely if you turn up without knowing the words and singing badly. My <laughs> turn and I, like, there's no way she could have cheated in her leaving, sir, because she got caught straight away. What makes me really sad about this is that uh, we don't actually know who won the worst singer in Ireland. Are you serious? Who holds that title? Could we ask Gabe or... Ross. Gabe... Ross! Is he gone? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, Ross! You forget... You for... Hang on a second now. You forget. Ross! <laughs> <laughs> you forget. Because so many so many people died in the last, like... In, like I that know a lot of people died, 20... but it's Burn. I know, but it was like Bowie and all the there others. Was there was a lot Prince. of people. Prince. There was yeah. a lot of people. Jesus. I know, but you forget because, like... We're going to have to ask Pat Kenny. Is, is Pat still here? Pat, I think Pat's still around. Okay. It's hard to tell with Pat, isn't it? <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> hey, Lorraine. Hey, Ross. Can I tell you about one of my favourite places in the country? Please do. Sea Church in Ballycotton. I love it. What an absolute savage venue. Your brother was down there recently, wasn't he? He was. He went down for his 40th birthday. I mm -hmm. wasn't able to go because I was at a wedding. Yeah, I missed yeah. out. And apparently I missed out on a savage night. He said the food was incredible. Mm -hmm. The service was incredible. Mm -hmm. The vibe was incredible. And that was in the restaurant. They didn't even go to the gig that was on that night. They didn't actually know there was a gig on that night. Yeah. Ardlo Hanlon was there and ah. they missed out on tickets. Uh, but incredible, incredible night they had. So think about this, right? Bally Cotton Comedy Festival started last year. The next one is coming up last weekend of September, first weekend of October. But in between all th those two festivals, it's become this kind of, this hub and hotspot now for uh, top class live comedy, mm. right? I've been down there, I did a solo show down there recently. Chris Kent down there as well. Uh, Reginald D. Hunter is going to be there, I think. By the time this comes out, he'll have just been. Arid Lohanlon was down there. Patrick Healdy was down there. It's an absolute, Steve Hughes from Live at the Apollo, Australian comedian. It's really, really become a home for like, international acts to come to Cork. And that's just for comedy but there's music as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's got that other voices kind of vibes about it. It's a converted church turned yeah. into a venue. Savage. Absolutely stunning. Lovely down there. acoustics, lovely vibes and it's just comfortable. It's nice. Everyone that's down there is like, this place is lovely. And hey, they happen to be sponsoring this podcast. Are you having a laugh? What a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we liked it before we even got them as a sponsor. We did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Outside, the whole place just looks fantastic. It's all lit up beautifully. Uh, you've got the park across the road. So if you want to go down there of a daytime on a Friday or Saturday or Sunday, you can get coffee, you can get ice cream, you can get a bite to eat. Then you can go across play on the on the swings and stuff, even if you're an adult. Uh, <laughs> check out seachurch.ie if you want to check out any of their gigs, make a booking in the restaurant. They also do private parties and functions. Mm -hmm. The church is really, really nice if you want great photographs and a great vibe and a great atmosphere as well. So check them out on seachurch.ie and seachurch on all their socials as well. Seachurch and Ballycotton. Check them out. Lovely, lovely, lovely. That is it from us for this bite-sized edition of Unforeseen. We've got our full episodes coming out in the next couple of weeks. Stick yeah. around. If you want to follow us, get us on all of our socials, which is at Unforeseen Pod. You can email us any suggestions you want. Uh, videos, uh, challenges, uh, anything that you want. Comments, abuse. We'll take abuse yeah, as well. Sure. Why not? It's all interaction. It's unforeseenpod at gmail.com. I don't look at anything because it's unforeseen. It all goes mm -hmm. through Lorraine. So if you send a video... You're safe in the hands that I won't be crossing my eyes until I actually do the podcast with you. You can rate and review the podcast. Please do. Uh, five stars would be great. And a nice little review. If you want to give it a three, two or one, you can go fuck yourself. And if you want to give it a four, just fucking click the wrong one. Click five. Uh, tell a friend as well. Word of mouth is very, very important yeah. to us. It's absolutely paramount that uh, we, we spread the word on this uh, because it's huge podcasts that have huge companies behind them that are like pumping thousands into advertising. And we're just going... 
Uh, these videos should be funny enough that people <laughs> might send them to their friend or whatever. Uh, you can now review on Spotify, which is very important, and iTunes as always as well for the reviews. It bumps it up in the old, sure in the old rankings and puts it in front of people. Uh, if you would like to see more of myself, uh, you can see my brand new, well, it's about six months old, comedy special on Amazon Prime Video. Um, and that's all over the world. You can also check out all of my socials, which is at Ross Brown Official. Um, and uh, you can check out, yeah, by the way, our TikTok is... Uh, it's hopping. It's doing... It's doing lit. 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 F- fire in the booth. <laughs> fire in the booth. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. You've got a couple of TikTok projects you're working on as well. Yeah, we'll we'll have more details we'll have on more that, that in the very future. Coy. I'm going to be like one of those influencers. I'm working on something very exciting, guys, Guy, but I can't actually tell you about it. Guys, everybody's been asking me about my yellow tooth and where did I get it? Um, it's actually it's actually by smoking and coffee. Um, but I'll be telling you more about it in my next video, guys. That's it for now. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for listening. We love each and every one of you more than the last person. Boosh. See the way I pressed that fucking button, and it was like. First time. It works. Yeah. yeah, and you told me that I've got the dexterity of a handless pigeon. <laughs> Let's just sit there and have you look at me judgmentally. I should have said wingless, shouldn't I? Mm. Mm.